Friends, I don't know if you've ever heard someone maybe jokingly say to one of their friends, hey, you rule or something like that, you know, because why that person, maybe they've just won something and they've achieved something. So, you know, but there are people that have been in such exalted states, they really believe they did rule over everything. They kind of believe that they're God. And one of them was Nebuchadnezzar, but he learned. He learned that he didn't rule over all, really. It was God who was reigning over all. But his son, even though he knew all about this, Belshazzar, he seemed to not really learn the lesson that his father had learned. So we're told in Daniel 5 about this son, Belshazzar, and he's he calls for a great feast, and he brings in these vessels, which were the holy vessels used in temple worship that had come from Jerusalem. And he wants to use them for a drinking party that he's going to have with his wives and concubines. And in the midst of this drinking party, they're going to be actually praising false gods, gods of of stone and wood and so forth. So that's that's what they do with the holy vessels. And all of a sudden what happens is immediately it says the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall, of the king's palace opposite the lampstand. And the king's color changed. Yeah, I bet it did. And and the queen is actually appears to be the queen mother. So, you know, she says, uh, oh, king, live forever. Let not your thoughts alarm you or your color change. There's a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in, in the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, were found in him. And Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father, the king, made him chief of, of the magicians. Apparently, you know, Daniel, he's, he's sort of been set aside as somebody that Belshazzar is not, not paying any attention to. So he said, call in that Daniel. Let him be called, and he'll show you the interpretation of these words that have been written on the wall. And so Daniel is brought in, and Belshazzar says, you're the Daniel? Are you that Daniel? One of the exiles of Judah, whom, whom the king, my father, brought it, brought from Judah? I've heard you, you have the spirit of the gods, that that's in you. Now, if you can read the writing, I'm going to make it worth your while. I'm going to give you great things. You're going to be clothed in purple and lots of other good things, right? But Daniel says this. He says, let your gifts be for yourself. He, he doesn't want anything from Belshazzar. Give your rewards to another. Nebuchadnezzar, your father, he's instructing Belshazzar. He says, Nebuchadnezzar, your father, when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened so that he dealt proudly, he was brought down from his kingly throne. His glory was taken from him. And he was driven from among the children of mankind, and his mind was made like that of a beast. Remember this from the previous chapter. So he, he made his dwelling, you know, with the animals, and he's eaten grass like an ox. And that was what happened until he knew, until Nebuchadnezzar knew that the Most High God rules the kingdom of mankind and sets over it whom he will. And then he says this, he, he he says this to Belshazzar. He says, you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, though you knew all this. So you see, we're really responsible for the things that have happened in our lives, maybe even to those above us, like, like our dad. You know, did, did he have something to learn? And he learned it, but then we haven't learned it. Hey, we're responsible before God. But what you've done, Daniel says, you took those vessels, those holy vessels, and you had this party for your wives, your concubines, you praised the gods of silver and gold and bronze and iron and wood and stone. And these are gods that are not real gods. They can't hear. No, they, they, these are gods uh, who are not gods. They can't see. They have no breath. They can't speak. And so now he said, but look, I'm going to tell you. I'll tell you what the words mean. And so the writing that, that was there was Mene, Mene, Tekel, and Parsin. And this is the interpretation of the matter. Mene, God has numbered the days of your kingdom and brought it to an end. You're finished, in other words. Te Tekel, you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes 
and the Persians. Wow, what an announcement. Now, Belshazzar wants to honor him, but the end of the chapter says this, that very night, Belshazzar, the Chaldean king, was killed, and Darius the Mede received the kingdom, being about 62 years old. So this is a real event that took place. And see, the thing is, whether it's Nebuchadnezzar or Belshazzar, when you're in that premier position, and even if you're not, you might have a tendency to think you're God, but you're not God. There is a God overall. So not only is there a God overall, but there's a king of kings who's the son of God. And he rules, you know. Whatever we might say about anybody else, Jesus reigns. Father, thank you that your son is reigning over all. This gives us hope and comfort in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings, friends.